Welcome to the channel. In this video, Frank and I are going to talk about how do you use data to make better educated guesses in your life. And we're going to use a really simple example around how do you guess basic things about a company with basic data. So give this video a like and subscribe and let's get started. So turning back to our example of the, the company and, and yeah, the growth yeah. of employees. We, we don't know much about it. We, we basically know nothing about it, right? There's yeah. this data set, we don't know anything about it. Um, if you had to make a guess, where, uh, what industry would you say that company exists in? Yeah, got it. So you're saying like based on the S curve we saw, like where would we guess? Well, at the bottom of the S curve, there's like one employee or zero yeah. employees or close to some, well, there has to be more than, well, there has to Let's be one. There's one. Okay. There's if, there's, one. if there's one, yeah. Like probably a startup or like a small company, like someone's side gig or someone's like job and then they obtain success, grow crazy and then the, the S curve starts to flatten. So like a new company, but I wouldn't know where or what they're doing and have no idea. Right. It's hard, hard to even guess, right? And yeah. we can say here, let's throw out some ideas. Let's yeah, say, yeah. Um, you know what, I see in the news all the time, these technology companies are growing really fast. So it seems like they were growing, they might've been growing slow, like you said, in a garage. And then all of a sudden something happens where they start to, to improve and, and um, their business grow. So they need to hire more people. So maybe it's a, yeah. a tech company, right? Like, cause I've been seeing that in the news. Um, there's also a lot of restaurants, right? I can walk down the street and there's fast yeah. food restaurants, there's dining restaurants. So maybe it's a restaurant. Could those be perhaps right? What what I would consider educated guesses? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But there's also a, a, I would say a more um, there could be a better way, and there is. Yeah, right. So one so, thing you could do. Let's look at a better way then. One thing you could do is go to cool. the U.S. Census Bureau and look at how many companies exist in particular industries. Yeah, right? just period. Right, and if you can figure out what industry has the most companies or what industry has the second most companies, maybe that's a better guess, right? Because the truth is we don't know much about the company. Yeah. So let's figure out what, um, how, right, what industries have the most companies. And maybe that's a more um, directionally a better way to look at it. And we really call that working with base rates. Yeah, so kind of like a distribution of outcomes that are likely based on, if, if we have to guess at random how many like what a company is, if we look at how many people work at a company, maybe that gives us a better idea of like pulling a, num a number out of a hat and guessing correctly. Absolutely. Cool. Right. And if you look at that, um, and that's what we did here, this is 2017 data. There's nothing more recent than that that I was yeah. able to find. But what we see is the top industry is what they call professional, scientific, and technical services. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. So I went to the further in the website and said, there are some examples here. So legal services, accounting, architectural, design firms. Yeah. This is at the top of our list at 811,000. If you had to guess what kind of company it is, if you want to put yourself in a ballpark, just it would guess. probably make more sense to go yeah. here. Yeah, what's right? crazy is if it was my great grandpa, it would probably be agriculture, forestry, fishing and hunting being at the top of the list. Different times. Yeah, when America, <laughs> like everyone was farmers. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> or live near a farm. <laughs> yeah. Let's try and use another example of base rates. Yeah, yeah. Another guess, right? Still don't have any any further information about the company, but if yeah. you guess what state, let's say it's a U.S. state, yeah. what state would you guess the company is located in? I would not pick Hawaii. Okay. Why would you not pick Hawaii? Not a lot of people live there. There's smaller states, but not a ton of people live in Hawaii. Perfect. So go to the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. I believe to guess randomly, I thought it was New uh, California that has the most people, New York or Texas, one of those three. If you look, Mitchell, you're totally right. California, biggest population, Texas number two, Florida is number three. Yeah. So if I'm gonna ask you again, going back to that company, if you had a guess, right, any state, yeah. what state do you think the company is in? I think your guess of California would be the right, decent, the best you could do yeah. using base rates. If we have to pull a number out of a hat, it might be a good guess versus like something else, right? Exactly. Like it's how do you fly blind, less blind. Like how do you just, yeah. Less blind. That makes and sense. Like California is a great guess. Texas is also a good guess. Any of these darker states. Yeah, Florida, Illinois. Also be a decent guess. Yeah. Awesome. What's really important to remember is that although California and Texas and Florida and these higher population states using your logic, which is a mental model in itself, yeah. higher population means more likely to have more number of businesses. Um, it's only a probability, yes. right? It could be California, Texas, Florida, 
but it could just as easily be South Dakota, Wyoming, West Virginia, right? Maine. Right? Awesome. It could be. It's just a lower chance that it could be. Yeah, you you could have been right if you picked Hawaii, right? I mean, could, I, right. you don't want to bet money Hawaii. on it, but it you could, could still be. be right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's always a chance of winning or losing. Okay, it's just the percentages. Yeah, that's cool. What awesome. if we use base rates for for one more guess? Yeah, oh, this man. company. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of guesses. <laughs> so this company, what do you think the uh, the average pay rate is? at the company oh man okay so if we look at these states like super high level we know california likely has a higher pay ac- across the rest of the country it's a good way to look at it texas has a little bit less compared to california florida probably a little bit less than texas so i would say you'd probably shoot towards the median or the average but if you pick depending on which state it probably would change the average pay right yeah like each state's probably going to pay different that's a great point Considering we don't know the state, yeah, we don't. Right? We, we tried to make a good educated guess. Yeah, we could, right? Look for some higher aggregate level data. Yeah, and something that I went into Google and I searched individual average income in the U.S. Yeah, and this pops up on top of my my Chrome browser, and it says thirty six thousand dollars is the personal in, is the median personal income. Yep. Right. So thirty six thousand dollars. If I'm thinking pay rate. I'm going to take that 36,000 divided by 2080, the average number of work hours in a year. Yep. And you get about $17 an hour. $17 an hour. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I think like if you would ask someone living in a big city like what the <laughs> average amount of like hourly pay would be, they would guess like 35, 25, right? Because like think of all the cities and states that are setting $15 minimum wage, 16, 17. Like it's crazy that the the average wage if we think about it in hourly terms is about 17 bucks in america yeah and so so i mean that's a that's a great point right and that i think speaks to our larger theme of mental models yeah and you don't necessarily want the things that are happening just around you in your locale yeah to skew your perception of the world yeah for sure living in minneapolis i if i assumed the rest of the world or the country or even minnesota was like minneapolis i'd have a much different opinion like you know absolutely yeah right cool. and, and we can get the 17 dollars an hour here but if we said what is that at the world scale yeah right, then it's going to change significantly exactly yeah that's that's interesting yeah so sure. if we did the same thing here average is okay but more often than not we want to think about ranges and yep. distributions so if we think about Pay rate. So what is a distribution then? Like an average is the middle. What is the distribution or what is a distribution? I think the easiest way to think about a distribution is the spread of values. Okay. So let's start with a very simple distribution. Yeah. Yeah. If we looked at our blank chart, right? You have a count of employees over here on that axis. Yeah. And down here you have a pay rate. If everyone got paid the same, let's say there are 200, I I think the number was 203 or 207 employees at the company that we had data on at the end of the data set, and they all made $17 an hour. Yeah. What would this distribution look like? It would just show one bar, yeah. You just get one bar, right? All 207 employees make $17 an hour. That is the distribution, right? There's no spread. Everyone makes the same. And I think that's probably the simplest distribution, a uniform one. But... That's unlikely, no. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's unlikely that everyone makes the same amount of money. And remember, 17 was still our guess. Right? Yep. That's our best guess knowing nothing else about the company yet. Um, it's more likely, right? Let's say 17 is the middle, but it's likely that the distribution is spread around 17, yep. right? Some people make less, some people make more with 17 being in the middle. And if we look at that, what we would call a more normal distribution, it would look more like this. Where again, 17 is close to the middle, but you have people making less, people making more. Yeah. That's just kind of like a normal distribution, we could call it, or like a standard distribution. We'd expect a lot near the middle, and then less and less is the further we get away from the middle. You can think of it as normal, and that is what we call it in the statistics world. This is a normal distribution. So the next thing we can do is actually look at the data. Yeah. Let's see what the distribution actually looks like. It's not normal. No. (laughs) So what we see instead is that there are a lot of people down in this this $20 an hour range. Yeah, for sure. But wow. then there's also a lot of people in this, let's say, $55 range. Yeah. Right? So there's 
uh, a lot of folks down uh, on the lower part, and there's a lot of folks on, on the, the upper part. Yeah, wow. So uh, let's go back to the middle. What is the average? We've been using the word average a lot. Yeah. So interestingly, if you calculate the average, averages, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the time we use the mean yep. calculation, and we also use the median. Yep, two different ways to measure the middle. And if we do that for oh. this distribution, we see the mean <laughs> right in the yeah. middle of our groups. <laughs> That's amazing. So the, basically that $17 would misrepresent, if you grab the middle person of income, it would overstate their income. The average person, if you just pick them at random in the middle, the person in the middle of the sandwich, they make even less than 17 per hour. Depending upon your data set. Yeah, depending on the, yes. but in this example, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Wow. Yeah, so it, if, if we're gonna think about typical and average, and we're gonna think about these groups and how do you incentivize them, yeah. you probably don't wanna use the, the mean, which is, what is it, around 30? Yeah. You probably don't wanna use the mean to think about these two groups, right? Yeah. You probably wanna go a step further and look at the two groups distinctly, again, if you're thinking about policy for your company, if you're thinking about incentives, and actually go ahead and calculate a mean for the two groups. Yeah. So if I split the group, wow at the $40 mark, and we say uh, folks above $40 an hour, folks below $40 an hour, what is the averages for those groups? Then we see the group one mean and the group two yeah. mean. What's amazing is like you don't ever, not to get political, but you don't ever hear politicians talking about like different groups of averages. <laughs> it's always like here's the average or, or here's the problem in one simple number, but this shows there's like two different worlds of living. Yeah. Or like two different parts of the world. Yeah. Like, your experiences making $21 an hour in this group are probably night and day different than this, right? I maybe you're, you're renting right. a house, maybe you own a house, maybe. Like there's probably all these different cultural things that come into play. Yeah, for sure. And not to make it confusing, but yeah. I believe that this is probably more normal than the normal distribution that we saw a few slides ago. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably more representations of this in real life than like very few things are evenly balanced, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. 